Hello and welcome back to JB Blues at last. Um, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been quite a while. If you remember from the previous video and probably the one before that, um, I was trying to sort out a computer after my uh, original computer decided to uh, um, off itself. <laughs> <coughs> so um, that's not proved as straightforward as I'd hoped. Um, but there are there are ways to sort of sort it out, but it's going to take a bit longer than I'd hoped, unfortunately. So it's a different format today, but I've, I've been itching to make something, so here I am. So bear with me today. Um, we're going to do something quite interesting and fun, I think. A bit of a different thing while we're waiting for the tech issue to be sorted. Um, and it's uh, it's uh, hmm. It's a bit of a bit of a fun thing, a bit of a challenge for myself, um, and it's uh, for any of you out there who might be watching this, who have a passing interest in blues, uh, rock and roll uh, from the fifties and, and and through to sort of sixties, seventies, um, blues inspired uh, rock, you know, uh, the classics really. And might be thinking about, well, you know, you'd like to start a bit of a collection. A little bit of a music collection of your own. <coughs> so I thought, okay, I'll go through my <laughs> CD collection, uh, which I've collected over many, many, many years, and see what small, sort of not too many CDs I could get to sort of make up a, a condensed sort of beginner collection, really, if, if you were a beginner wanting to get into it. Now I've found most of the stuff, some of the stuff I've, I've got somewhere I can't find, some of the CDs I can't find for some reason, of course because I need them now, I can't find them. But we'll I'll get to those and, and tell you about them, uh, those recommendations, um, when we reach that gap in the in the chronological order that I'm going to sort of uh, uh, give those to you, if you would like to sort of, obviously you can hop on Spotify, you can hop on iTunes, or your preferred uh, uh, streaming service uh, and find any of these really <coughs> and the ones I've not been able to find myself so um, anyway let's get started that's gonna have a long video aren't we so I'm gonna start with so these are my recommendations for, for a basic classic collection of, of, of <coughs> the artists and albums um, that I think any collection should have in it, really, as a base, I suppose. Um, you may have different, of a, you may have chosen other ones, you know, personally yourselves that you'd like in the collection as a sort of a base. But uh, this is a, this is a, a skeleton, sort of a skeleton collection, I suppose. I'm going to sort of uh, uh, present here, and then obviously you fill in uh, what you'd like to fill in in between in the gaps chronologically, or you know. With, with artists and bands and things <coughs> anyway forgive my voice <laughs> i've been talking a lot i'm going to start with i'm going to start with uh in the uh back in the mid early 60s um you can probably hear on the tv there i've got t-bone walker going oh let's before we start let me just explain to me of course you've got t-bone walker one of my favorites um You've got uh, early muddy waters. Um, you've got just so many great pre nineteen sixties, you know, artists that really were the founding fathers. You've got Sister Rosetta, Big Mama Thornton, all these great originators. You know, uh, Jimmy Reed, of course. Um, the problem for this video with with going through recommendations for them is most of their output were single recordings they weren't albums you know at that time in the 40s and 50s so um that's why i can't really go through through a, an album uh, collection uh, recommendation for them at the moment you can buy the compilations you know you can buy a, a, a t-bone compilation of his greatest hits same with uh, sister rosetta same with 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 her uh, Big Mama, same with, with any of the sort of earlier uh, acoustic blues into electric blues, early Chicago, Chicago blues um, uh, 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 artists, you know. So I'd recommend doing that 
but that's on the compilation side really of single collect, you know, singles output collected together and um, so that's where we're starting in the mid 60s when we get to the sort of I suppose what some many would call the <laughs> the blue-eyed blues <laughs> sort of uh, explosion with uh, a lot of the white blues artists um, and bands but still classics nonetheless and still great musicians nonetheless and people who loved what came before which is what inspired them so I'm going to start in 1965 was this let's see I'll refresh my memory. I think it was 65 this came out and this is Paul Butterfield, the Paul Butterfield blues band. This is an absolute classic, classic, classic album. A must have, a staple for any sort of, you know, blues album collection to start off with. And just fantastic, a classic, classic. Uh, Born in Chicago, Shake Your Money Maker, oh, with Mike Bloomfield and on his Telecaster, oh, just amazing. Um, let's see, got my mojo working, of course. <laughs> uh, of course, it's by by Muddy. Um, I've just set a mystery train. To, you'll love this. You, should, you will love this. If you love blues, you'll love this. Absolute classic. Recommend it. 150%. So, so definite. Of course, Paul Butterfield himself, one of the great, great blues, uh, blues um, harp players. Along with, of course, um, Sonny Boy Williamson, who came before, Little Walter. Um, I mean, Jerry Portnoy afterwards, of course, toured with them, um, famously with uh, Muddy in the 70s. Uh, just fantastic. So, highly recommend that. As a start, um, we're in the mid sixties at the minute. I couldn't find it. <laughs> of course, uh, the famous Beano album from uh, John Mayall's uh, Blues Breakers, and of course with a famous, <laughs> a famous, uh, uh, famous um, uh, 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 guitar playing by, sorry, my mind, <laughs> getting older, <laughs> Eric Clapton uh, playing on his uh, on his early 60s, and his 60s, Les Paul was it, I think famously, and uh, of course inspired uh, by, um, in lot, uh, well, quite considerably by um, Freddie King in his, uh, uh, Freddie King Plays the Blues, I think it's called, album from 53, I think it was, where he's got a uh, a gold top with P90s um, and I think uh, the story is that uh, Clapton couldn't get hold of one of those where he was <laughs> where and when he was in uh, uh, the early 1960s London so we got the, the next best thing which was a which was a, a, a humbucker loaded 1960 I think Les Paul in fact I don't think he even knew that um, Freddie King uh, didn't have humbuckers in his Les Paul. I, I'm not sure he even knew at that time if Freddie King had P90s, which of course sound different to humbuckers. Um, again, that's another great, <laughs> another great album. But again, probably one of the first album albums. Yeah, yeah, uh, which I have got again somewhere. Well, I'm not sure. I, I might have had digitally, so I can't sort of show it to you. But I'd, I'd include that in as was one of the early ones to have as well. Freddie King plays the blues, um, uh, which I haven't actually physically got on me. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so that's an absolute classic um, as well. So I recommend that, of course, as a, as a first, <laughs> as one of your first uh, uh, albums for your blues collection, early blues album collection. Then we'll move on to, of course, the other. There we are, the other great King Albert himself, possibly my favourite blues guitar player of all time, Albert. With his blues rumba style. There we are, born under a bad, bad sign. Absolute classic again. Absolute classic. Must have in any sort of blues collection, whether it's again CDs, a CD collection, or Spotify, or streaming. Even if you can find the actual vinyl. <laughs> there we are, absolute classic. And again, we've got born under a bad sign, Cross Got Saw, uh, Oh Pretty Woman. God. 
laundromat blues as the years go passing by just unbelievable and uh, even Steve Cropper Steve Cropper's on here of course uh, Booker T Isaac Hayes and piano Booker T of course uh, Donald Duck Dunn if you've seen the Blues Brothers you know who these people are <laughs> um, unbelievable so um, and of course uh, that's because like Albert all of those uh, Steve and and, 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 and uh, Dunn and, and Booker T of course all with uh, Stax at the time Stax Vault as it was later known Stax Record Company, um, which I think is what this came out with. Stax, isn't it? Stax. So, uh, very famous, very, very, I mean, just crucial part of your collection there with Albert. Highly recommended. Um, I'm going to go for the, Now, you might find this a bit strange because <laughs> this is um, not strictly blues, but then it is and it isn't. I mean, a lot of blues, to be honest with you. But this, I'm going to go for Johnny Cash. And I think this should be part of your blues collection. And you go, okay, well, James, but Johnny's, that's country. Yes, it is. This he is. But of course, you know, no genre as an island to it. So especially back in <laughs> the mixing pot of the 50s and 60s in, 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 uh, in the US. So, of course, there's a lot of country in blues and there's a lot of blues in country. Um, back then, and I, th I think this is first of all, it's a fantastic album. It's live, it's Johnny Cash live in Folsom Prison. Um, absolute classic, and uh, I think that's something I think that's something you should have in your collection if you, if you, even if you know, just something a bit different to be honest with you. This was from this was live in Folsom Prison, I think this is 60. This was recorded in them, um, came out in where are we? Is this 68? Yeah, 1968. And uh, I think the guitarist here is Luther. Where are we? I'm trying to get the, the, the notes here for you. I think it's like, trying to find the. Where are we? Do, 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 do. Luther Perkins. Carl Perkins, Luther Perkins, both on guitar. Um, of course, Carl Perkins' original Blue Slate Shoes, probably one of my favourite all time. <laughs> Blues, early rock and roll, rockabilly classics, along with um, Roy Orbison's Ubi Doobie, just done the guitar work on both is unbelievable. But uh, so Luther Perkins, and of course, unfortunately, Luther died um, after this album was recorded in Folsom Prison in a, in a I believe, a fire in uh, in a trailer that he was sleeping in at the time. So um, Johnny had to replace Luther with a, a, a new guitarist who copied, Luther, uh, copied Luther's style very impressively actually onto the caster when they made his next live album, I think, which was live in San Quentin, which is where the uh, Boy Known Sue live recording comes from. But this is live in Balsam Prison. Absolute, uh, again, I think that's a must really, even though it's not strictly, strictly blues. I think it's, I think it's a must, uh, really. And now, of course, I'm going to jump a bit now. <laughs> well, not really. That was 1968. I was. You got have to fill the gaps in yourself because there's, you can have loads of other artists now in between these. These are the sort of the, the sort of I suppose the rocks to get across the river for me with the gaps in between. Um. So now we go on to the sort of I suppose the the sort of harder blues inspired rock. Um. And the old Led Zeppelin, of course. See so Zeppelin 2. There we are, Zeppelin 2. Famous, famous uh, album cover there. And of course, uh, from my childhood, I've known this. <laughs> of course, you've got old, opens with a whole lot of love. Um, Lemon Song, possibly my favourite Led Zeppelin song, actually. Uh, Heartbreaker, Ramble on Moby Dick. Bring it on home, probably my, probably my second most favourite, <laughs> most favourite, that's right, favourite Zeppelin song. There we are. Of course, Zeppelin get a lot of credit for sort of, like Elvis does, for sort of, you know, 
stealing previous blues artist pants as it were <laughs> putting them on but um absolute classic i'd reckon at the end i think you'd have to have that in a collection really if you could have a blues blues rock collection um in the 50s 60s 70s you know um then we have another absolute favorite and classic door the doors la woman the doors of course earlier in the 60s earlier in their albums quite psychedelic I think LA Woman is the uh, bluesiest, most sort of uh, traditionally blues based album. Um, absolute favourite. Total, complete classics on this. Of course, I think, well, the last album for, for Jim Morrison before he went off to France and sadly passed away too young. Um, but uh, I mean, The Changeling, Love Her Madly. Uh, let's see, LA Woman, uh, Crawling King Snake, Riders on the Storm, I mean, just, you can't beat that. So that's a must have as well, in my humble opinion. Um, again now, as with Johnny, <laughs> Johnny Cash, you may find this a bit odd if you're thinking about pure blues, but we think about blues and rock and um, blues inspired classic albums. And uh, although you may find it odd, I'm going to include Paranoid by Black Sabbath there as something you should have in your blues rock and blues rock, blues and blues rock inspired uh, uh, early collection. Um, because actually, Tony Naomi. Uh, the famous guitarist, of course, of Sabbath. So I'll turn that down a little bit. Um, a bit more. Is um, is a blues bass player, you know. Um, a lot of his riffs are blues based, even though it's loud and, and, and you know, well, very, very loud. <laughs> And very sort of new sounding, comparatively about, about uh, you know, and heavy sounding compared to Led Zeppelin. Um, much of this is blues based, you know. It's it's blue and jazz. Uh, I know um, Bill Ward, the drummer, fantastic drummer from from Sabbath. Um, a lot of his uh, uh, drum licks are again, of course, harking back to to jazz. The great jazz uh, drummers. And their hooks, so you might find it, you might disagree, but I think you should have that in your collection. Absolute classic album again. You've got War Pigs, Paranoid, um, Iron Man, uh, Fairies Wear Boots, probably my favorite along with War Pigs. <laughs> so I'd recommend that. Um, for something that, that was 1970, I think that came out, so we're into the 70s now, and now we go on to. Mm. I've only quite recently added this actually, but there we are. Clapton's famous Layla and Other Love Songs. There we go. Which of course is one of the really sort of best known collaboration albums. Uh, inspired by, strangely, by his uh, obsession with uh, George Harrison's then, uh, I think, girl girlfriend and then wife, I think actually. Um, sort of a yeah homage to her at the time and of course you've got uh, we've got um, Bell Bottom Blues we've got uh, Layla we've got the Thorn Tree in the Garden again absolute classic a must have in your collection here we are when Eric really started using his uh, strats that he's famous for using now it was made up from different different uh, necks and bodies that they picked up in America. And there we are, brownie strut. Uh, that was 1971, I think. 72, I think we got here. You know, 71 as well. You want to move on to the Who? Who's next? The famous album cover there. No words on it. There we are. Who's next? There we are. There's a track listing, and we've got uh, Barbara O'Reilly, Won't Get Fooled Again, oh, Behind Blue Eyes, uh, absolute classic, I think that's 71, 
Let's get him out. What is he missing? I think quite safe. I think it's 71, 72 that came out. They only are. It's the same sort of vintage as War Pigs and uh, LA Woman. There we are. On we go. Again, I think the same year. Back to Zeppelin. Zeppelin. Well, <laughs> I used to call it Zeppelin 4, but it's not, is it? It's, uh, it's the Runes album or the un un unnamed album. There we are. Again, another very famous album cover. Known since childhood. There we are. Here's the back. Man with the lantern. And uh, Black Dog. Rock and Roll. Uh, Stairway to Heaven. Uh, and the Levy Breaks. And many more. Famous for its production values, of course. Absolute classic. Must have. We're going to have a Blues Rock collection. That must have. Uh, then of course again same sort of vintage <laughs> 70 to so 69 to 72 I've probably you know the time of the of the, of the the legendary blues rock albums and bands I think so here's uh, here's our third sort of <laughs> third great Brit um, blues rock band of the early 70s album band we've had Led Ze we've had uh, Led Zeppelin We've had Black Sabbath, and here's uh, uh, the squaring of our triangle, if you like, with Deep Purple and Machine Head. Absolute classic. Another absolute classic album. All blues based, of course. All harking back to the to the uh, to the greats. Another classic album cover. And oh goodness, let's open this one up. This one. We've got Highway Star. Uh, smoke on the water, lazy, space trucking. <laughs> Look at that. Again, a must have for any blues, blues rock fan. 70s major rock band fan collection, you know. As I say, Sabbath, uh, Zeppelin, and Purple in its, I think this is Purple's third incarnation of the band. Um, can't be beaten. So that's the bit towards the end of the seventies now, I think. Oh no, we're still we're still we're still in the early seventies, aren't we? Let's move on to ZZ Top here. ZZ Top going back to America now from from the UK. There we go. Trey Ombres. ZZ Top, another classic. Here you get a bit of a live album mixed with the uh, studio recordings. There we go before they had the the big beards. <laughs> Um, this is 73, I think. This came out. Trion Braze, you've got Waiting for the Bus. Uh, Jesus Left the Car, Just Left Chicago. What else have we got? Mm. LaGrange. Real CZT ZZ Top classic album. Not. Again, I think 73, I must have. If you want the Texas Blues. Blues Rock Sound in your collection. It's easy top, a bit of easy top, haven't you? Um, going a bit further, <laughs> further east and south to Florida, um, nineteen seventy-three, I think again, seventy-three, seventy-four. We've got Second Helping by Leonard Skinner, another famous uh, album cover there. Again, absolute classic uh, songs on here for, for blues, blues rock. Uh, 70s blues rock uh, from Leonard Skinner, Sweet Home Alabama, um, Working for MCA, Ballad of Curtis Lowe, Swamp Music, Call Me the Breeze, just unbeatable. It's Leonard Skinner, another must have, second helping. And we're going to end up in the early 80s here, so up to up to 84, I think I've got here. There we go. Here's one of my personal favourites, great Rory Gallagher from from Ireland, not far from me, where I am. The Irish Tour '74, year of my birth. <laughs> there we go. That's a clean cover. So this is this is live performances from the, the 1974 tour of Ireland, uh, right in the midst of the the, the troubles. Um, 
a lot of bands weren't touring because of you know the fear of, of being hit. Um, that's serendipitous. I'm talking about Rory and it's just come on the, <laughs> on the telly <laughs> in my playlist mix. Um, you got Cradle Rock, um, Tattooed Lady, which is what's coming on today now. Um, too much alcohol. A million miles away. Walk on hot coals. Uh, just, just you know, absolute classics from Rory, and live as well. Live, astounding album. Absolutely astounding. I must have. Um, I think often overlooked Rory, and it shouldn't be. There we go. <laughs> and to finish off. We now move into the 80s. We move about nine years later. Obviously, there's a big gap now. You can fill it with anything you want. I could put, yeah, between 74 and 83. You could have so many more albums. I'm trying to, be, I'm trying to get sort of under 30 minutes this video. ZZ Top Eliminator, the first real blues, electric blues, mixed with, for the first time, early 80s synth um, sound really you know pretty unique album actually and, and a really a, a departure for ZZ Top from their earlier work which a lot of uh, ZZ Top fans didn't like at the time because it was so different but I grew up on this this was I've heard this hundreds of times you know. <laughs> again another iconic album cover you know that beautiful car and we've got Give me all your loving, got me under pressure, sharp dressed man. Oh, I need you tonight, legs, TV dinners. Just, and many more, absolute classic. There we go, 1983. Very, uh, yeah, pretty seminal album for blues, blues rock in the early 80s, this one. And to finish up, to finish up, you could carry on with your collection, but to finish up, Let's go to the next year, 1984, and of course, SRV. Here we are with Texas Flood, another classic album found on many t shirts <laughs> and posters all over the world. There we go. Texas Flood, probably uh, his most important album, one that's all sort of launched him out into the world uh, for lots of people. And now uh, we've got oh, Pride and Joy, Texas Flood. Rude Mood, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Here, where are we? Lenny. There we go. Fantastic. Fantastic, and another must have. Now, of course, that's the end of my little recommendation because I'm trying to keep it under 30 minutes for you so you're not bored to death. <laughs> but um, I'd say that's a great start to a core um, fledgling. Um, collection, you know. So, um, yeah, tell me what you think down below. What should have been included? Uh, if I should have put Johnny Cash in there, <laughs> if I should have put Led Zeppelin in there, uh, not this way, uh, Black Sabbath. I didn't feel like I put in Led Zepp and Deep Purple and not have Black Sabbath. I didn't see right. Um, so, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully, we'll be back to the normal format soon enough. Um, but uh, yeah, take care of yourselves, enjoy the last few weeks of the summer, wherever you are, and uh, ciao for now, keep listening, take care.